Reverend Judge. Happy end of the week. And by the way, I should say, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Coming off of our last episode, you know, I got great feedback from my man, Texas Terrence. <laughs> so Texas Terrence, like, Bourbon Judge, change it up. Let me see some, some Texas bourbon, right? Which is cool. So it's kind of really neat to kind of experience some Texas bourbon, which I don't normally sip on a daily basis. So I appreciate you, Terrence. Thanks, my man, again, for the idea. Kind of building off of the whole, you know, non-Kentucky bourbon, right? That was Texas. But just kind of think of myself, what other good bourbons are out there, right? We all know there's great bourbons and rise come from Kentucky, right? Kentucky's a hard bourbon to rise. We get it. But there is actually good bourbon and rise outside the state of Kentucky. So with this episode, we're going to do the five best bourbons and rise, in just my opinion, that are based outside the state of Kentucky. And let me give you five facts about them, right? Number one, the name of the distillery, the location, a few different types that they offer, the price range, as well as the availability, right? How easy or hard is it to find? Um, and before we get started, I know you see right in front, my man, Jack Daniels. Everyone knows the bourbon judge loves himself some Jack Daniels. And I do love the Jack Daniels barrel proof, right? The barrel proof uh, whiskey, bourbon, whatever, as well as the barrel proof rye, which is back there. I know my man Mojo, if he's watching this, he's probably like, bourbon judge, that rye, <laughs> you're getting less and less. You're getting almost to the empty point for the rye. Don't worry, don't worry, Mojo. I got a backup for the barrel proof rye, so I'm, I'm good to go. Um, so this is actually not even part of my top five uh, for you know non-Kentucky bourbons or rye. It's just so damn good. I couldn't even leave it out. I had to at least, it had to come to the party, right? You can't have Jack Daniels uh, not come to the top five bourbon and rye uh, outside the city of Kentucky. So he's here just to kind of hang out. We're gonna bring five new players to the mix. All right, let's jump into it. All right, number one, Sagamore Spirits. So Sagamore Spirits is based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, they're actually owned by, right here, my man who owns uh, Under Armour. And uh, like any other new distillery, when you're starting up, it takes years to age your own rise, which they are doing by the way right now. However, to get your, obviously to get started up, they did source their uh, rise up apparently from uh, MGP. And I would say from a price standpoint, the cool thing about Sagamore is that you will not find it any more than anywhere from 50 to $75, right? 50 to $75. Um, by the way, they only make rise. They don't make any bourbon. They only make rise. They make, uh, this one here is the cast drink. You can see the bottle again. They also make uh, a double oak one as well. Uh, and they have a few other different versions as well. But I will say, their rise are just fantastic. For 50 to $75, especially that double oak one, that one is just amazing. This is phenomenal too. Um, what will be interesting to see is that when Sagamore stops using MGP and only uses their own juice that they're making right now themselves in Maryland, will the quality still be there? Hopefully it will, we don't know. Um, I will say from an availability standpoint, slightly hard to find depending on where you are in the US, but if you can get liquor shipped to you, you should definitely look at Total Wine. They do sell a lot of their products and you can get it shipped to you. And um, I honestly will say, you will not be disappointed in Sagamore Spirits. All right, that's Sagamore. Let's dive into, ugh, that was a ride. Let's go back to some bourbon here. Breckenridge Distillery out of Colorado. So Breckenridge is cool because, a couple of reasons. So they make, obviously, you know, they make a small batch. Um, this is a high proof blend. They have a bunch of different versions as well, finishing like uh, sherry as well, and a, a couple of different versions also. Similar to them, to uh, Sagamore, they're anywhere from 50 to 75 dollars. And I will say, uh, not only from a price standpoint, but then also from an availability, you can find Breckenridge maybe a little bit more than you can Sagamore. If you can't, I've seen Sa uh, Breckenridge, by the way, also online at Total Wine, so you can get it shipped to you. Um, by the way, just to be clear, I know I'm saying Total Wine a lot. I'm not getting uh, endorsement by Total Wine. Trust me. <laughs> I wish, uh, but I'm not. But from an availability standpoint, if you're looking to find it, you can at least find it at Total Wine to get it shipped to you. So it's all about what is you know available for you guys and gals out there. But this one here, 105 proof, the quality standpoint is just fantastic. What makes Breckenridge special is the fact that, you know, well, at least from what they say, and I do believe it as well, being in Colorado is very clean, the air, but most important, the 
H2O. So the water that they use to kind of, uh, you know, bring down the proof a little bit that they put into their bourbons is just fantastic. And folks, I'm telling you, Breckenridge is a sleeper, sleeper, sleeper. Great quality. As you can tell, I enjoyed the hell out of it. <laughs> Let's put it right behind my man, Jack. All right. Woo, three to go. Mm, all right. So we're gonna go to uh, Tennessee. No, 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 not Jack. Hold on, hold on, give me a second. We're gonna go to Green Briar Distillery, um, which many of you do know the name Bell Mead. So the majority of the products they put out is Bell Mead, right? So Green Briar Distillery out of Nashville, Tennessee. By the way, Nashville, one of my favorite cities. Uh, and Tennessee, one of my favorite states, by the way. Um, Bell Mead uh, Bourbon, they make just some phenomenal stuff. Similar, kind of a way to Sagamore, uh, Greenbrier Distillery, and uh, which is, again, based in Nashville, Tennessee, they are making their own stuff. But for now, they are sourcing all their bourbons from MGP. They then bring it back to Nashville. They blend it, they bottle it. Uh, when you think of Bell Mead as a whole, gosh, think of they have the Madeira, the Cognac. Um, I have the old school reserve, which is the barrel strength, the cast strength. The new version of reserve is actually 108.3. But again, from a price standpoint, anywhere from 50 to $75. And the cool thing about Bell Mead, slightly maybe better than these, at least these two here, is the fact that you can really find Bell Mead almost anywhere. I mean, I've traveled all across the U.S. and I've seen Bell Mead almost in every, like at least every good liquor store that's out there. So from an availability standpoint, easy to find. And uh, they do make some damn good bourbon, by the way. Similar to Sagamore, I hope. Um, you know, once uh, Greenbrier Distillery starts making more and more of their own stuff, it's also at the same level of what uh, MGP has been producing for them. So, that's it. Now, we're down to the final two. Before we get to the final two, I need everyone's help. Please take a second, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. I tell you, one of the best things out there is going back and forth with everyone. Um, you know, all the different commentary, you know, Texas Terrence, uh, Tony Lima, Ivy, uh, Russ, my man Russ, who always makes me laugh, Blake, everyone that's out there. I truly appreciate everyone who's supporting the Bourbon Judge. I also appreciate all my patrons as well. Thank you as well. Tab, my man Tab. Um, so thank you folks. If you'd like to support the Bourbon Judge as well, via from my Patreon perspective, please see the link below. Um, but also please make sure you hit the subscribe button. All right, we have two to go. <sighs> All right, we're gonna go out to Utah to High West Distillery. If anyone knows the Bourbon Judge, you know how much I hate it, and I mean hate it. Yippee Kaye. Thank goodness. Let's take a second to pray. Yippee Kaye is no longer being made. Thank you for no longer making Yippee Kaye. That garbage is no longer being made. <laughs> All right, I'm keeping it real though, seriously. Midwinter's Nice Dram. All jokes aside, High West Distillery makes some great products, right? Um, they make a double rye, they make a burr rye, which is a mix of a bourbon and a rye, and they also make their top of the line is this one here, which is uh, Midwinter Nice Dram. It's finished in a French oak port wine barrel. I've had multiple different acts, scenes, different versions, right, which you see on the bottom here. Um, they've all been top notch, right? And from a price standpoint, that's where this one is slightly different than these guys here. It's not in that $50 to $75 range. Now we're going a bit north. It's uh, about $100. And um, when you think about you know, the $100 price point, that's it's, it's pretty high up there. But I will tell you, I've never, again, I've never had a bad version of Midwinter's Nice Strand. It's great quality, day in, day out. My only challenge with Midwinter's Nice Strand is the fact that from an availability standpoint, it's very hard to find. I wish High West was not making that Yippie Kaye craft. I wish they were making more of this because this is where it is. This is, it's just delicious. It's honestly just delicious. It's, I can't, oh, I gotta stop talking about it. <laughs> All right, folks. We're at the end of the road, right? We're at the end of the road. Um, I poured a little bit in the glass. 
the fifth and final bourbon, and this one's a bourbon, coming out of the state of New York. Woo! Ha ha! Drum roll, please. My man, Hill Rock Distillery. So I've already poured this, but I'm gonna hold it right here. Actually, I'll put it right in front. So Hill Rock Distillery is based out of New York. They make a single malt whiskey. They make a double rye. They make their standard uh, small batch bourbon. Um, from a price standpoint, the regular Hill Rock uh, bourbon or rye is about 90 to $95. Now this one here that I just poured, which you see this empty bottle, uh, this is actually a cast strength single barrel. And this one's finished in a cognac finish, right? This one, their cast strength, it goes for a little bit more. This is like 115 to 120, so $120, a little bit more from a price standpoint. But I will tell you, this is fantastic juice. If you find a small batch, definitely buy a bottle. If you ever see a cast strength version, no matter if it's finished in a cognac like mine is or not, I will say please buy it all day long. This is one of the best bourbons out there, best distilleries out there that most people do not know about. Unfortunately, from an uh, availability standpoint, a little bit harder to find. That's probably my only challenge with Hill Rock. Hopefully they can make a little bit more because um, Dave Pickerel, the uh, master distiller, is just doing a fantastic job. This one, by the way, I should, if, if you recall back, was in my Reddit top five bourbons, right? So my Reddit challenge, this is one of my top five bourbons that I picked. I'm telling you folks, this is just that good. It's so good, you see an empty bottle here, I love this bourbon so much, I went out literally yesterday bourbon shopping. <laughs> I bought another bottle. I'm telling you, this is fantastic. If you ever see it, please grab it. Let me get into the notes, because I, and I've reviewed all these before with the exception of Hill Rock, so I'll put the link up above. But for Hill Rock, I haven't had a chance, but uh, this again is the uh, cast strength. This one here I have is 114.1 proof. Let me just get into the nose real quick. You get a ton of like cherries. They do, uh, they use like uh, sherry barrels as well from like an aging standpoint. They do also age it in sherry uh, barrels. So it's very, a little bit fruitier on the nose. You get some walnuts, some fig. Mm. Some very sweet caramel mixed with like honey. Oh, it blends together the caramel the honey, the sherry, and the walnuts. I'm telling you folks, I can nose this damn thing all day long and all, all night long. Oh, oh gosh, it's so nice. <laughs> folks, as we always say, cheers, salute. I appreciate everyone out there. Thank you so much for watching the channel. Mm. Everything from that nose transfer to the palate every single step of the way. The sherry, the uh, walnuts, the caramel mixed with some vanilla. That is fantastic bourbon. And you guys know me, I never ever leave good bourbon in the glass. Mm, 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 mm. Folks, as we say in this courtroom, that right there, it's a bye all day long. Peace, cheers, salute. I appreciate everyone out there. Talk to you guys soon. Later.